So, uh, hi, I'm Nate uh, Koenig. We're at OSRF, and I'm going to introduce the uh, VRC qualifications and final competition worlds. So, what you see here is uh, the Qual Task 1 world, where teams have to walk through these gates in order to reach the endpoint. Uh, and they can use whatever mechanism they want from the uh, keyboard tele op that we provide to their own walking controllers. And these uh, score files are uploaded to uh, the VRC web portal where DARPA will review them and decide who passes qualifications in order to go on to the final VRC worlds. And there are steps over there, it looks like? So there are steps. Um, after the uh, first four gates, there are a set of four uh, stepping stones that increase the complexity a little, but not too drastically. Uh, and basically, we can uh, get over these steps with some simple controllers using uh, a mixture of ROS nodes and keyboard teleop. And you said that when teams are doing this, they won't have the same view that we're looking at now. They'll just be looking through the, the scheme of the robot can see? Or? For the quals, the teams have a uh, god's eye view. They see everything that we see right now. And uh, this is meant to run on their own local machine, so it's up to them to uh, use whatever mechanism they want to get the robot from point A to point B. It's only in the VRC where the uh, simulation is run in the cloud and they don't have this God's eye view and they have to use only the sensor data coming off of the camera and whatever uh, laser subscriptions uh, and stereo image processing they, they can. Okay. So the second qualification world is meant to focus on manipulation. And here the Atlas is standing in front of the table with a screwdriver and a bin. And the goal is to move the uh, screwdriver into the bin. So uh, John is going to demonstrate using our fancy keyboard uh, or teleop control tools to move the Atlas robot into a position to hopefully grasp the screwdriver, pick it up. This comes after many hours of practice. And put it into the bin. It's all in the wrist, John. Oh, so close. Um, so what you saw was, was a very uh, uh, rudimentary interface to control Atlas. Uh, we expect teams to ha develop their own more sophisticated motion planning algorithms in order to pick up the drill and put it into the bin. Okay, so those are the two qualifiers. Yep. And a lot of teams will be doing those qualifiers and based on their scores, DARPA will decide who gets to go on the actual BRC, the, the challenge portion? That's correct. Okay. Yep. So the VRC consists of three basic tasks, and there's five uh, variations for each of those tasks. So each team will have 15 runs to compete. Uh, and John is showing us the first task, which is driving a Polaris vehicle. So the robot starts in a pen. The goal is to move through the gates, get into the vehicle, drive down the road, and exit the vehicle and walk through the final gate. Okay, and this is the one where they won't have the God's eye view. So right. that's why they're starting in a pen, so they don't know what's outside? Exactly, so the pen is meant to give the teams the opportunity to bring up their controllers, uh, get their OCU all set up, and then once they pass through that first gate, time starts and they can see what the world is and can complete the VRC task. Okay. So in general, how much of this is teleoperation and how much is... That's, that's uh, going to be interesting. We don't currently know how many teams are going to rely solely on tele teleoperation and how many teams will rely on more autonomy. We expect it's going to be a mixture. Um, and we definitely know a lot of teams are developing autonomous walkers. Uh, but in terms of driving down the road or picking up objects, it could be all teleop or it could be all autonomy. This is the second VRC world. Uh, the goal here is to walk over different types of terrain. This
terrain can be mud, it can be uh, uneven hills, and a rubble pile. So as in the last VRC world, uh, Atlas starts in a pen. It can't see what type of environment it's going to encounter. Time starts once it goes to the gate. In this case, it will first encounter a mud pit that it has to go through, followed by some hills, and then a rubble pile. And it has the option to move the rubble, not just? The rubble is completely uh, dynamic, so they can either step over the rubble or pick it up and move it out of the way. And it's meant to simulate cinder blocks and two by fours. So uh, it's, it's reminiscent of what you might find in a, in a, uh, a rubble field from a disaster. The final task is meant to focus on manipulation. So again, Atlas starts in a pen, and after walking through the gate, it encounters a hose on a table, a red standpipe, and a green valve. And the idea here is to pick up the hose, attach the blue coupling end into the red standpipe, uh, turn it so it locks into place, and then turn on the valve. And this is meant to demonstrate the ability to provide water to a place that needs some cooling or to put out a fire, for example. The variations within the worlds can range from uh, objects being placed in different locations to the road course changing to the steering wheel being wider or smaller. And the variations in this world may include the hose in a different location, the valve is harder to turn on or you need more rotations, uh, things of that nature.